a short video. It's probably perfect timing. It's about three minutes from Dr. Cam. He's, he's our CEO and he's done a short presentation on chronobiology, particularly in relation to food, but it explains some really vital things that are important for everything. So I'll just start that and it should actually run for four minutes. That's okay. I... This is one of the most interesting areas in PH360 is the chronobiology side of things. And I wanted to give a brief uh, view on it right now in regards to nutrition. And really chronobiology is the story of two clocks. What's very, very important is that we all know, well, we may know that we have a central clock in our brain that works on light dark. So when you go overseas and you see a sunrise, your brain goes, oh, that's an interesting sunrise. It must be the start of the day. I'm going to start resetting my clock for now. This is time zero. This is when I should have woken up. And it takes a few days to get used to that, sometimes faster, depending on how you travel. Uh, but what we do know is that there's this master clock, the, S, the suprachiasmatic nucleus, and it's determining what time of day it is and your general 24 hour cycle based on when the sun goes up and the sun goes down as long as you can see it. Now, obviously, if you change the light, if you give yourself lots of blue light in at nighttime, like a computer screen, something like that, it's gonna extend, your body's gonna think, oh, it's still lots of light, so it must not be that late, so it's not ready for sleep yet. And this is one of the big reasons as to why people don't sleep so well, is because their sleep hygiene, the amount of light around their brain in their eyes, which are very sensitive to this, um, isn't, isn't times the way it should be. So first step by helping reset the master clock to the chronobiology in PA360 is by really making sure the right lighting is around. You're not using computer screens an hour before bedtime uh, and in that period so your body can wind down. And the sooner, the sooner after sunset, the better that you can get rid of screens and get a blue light filter so you're not seeing any blue light, the better. Now, what's really interesting about this is is that your food, let's say you're a shift worker, your food works on a slightly different clock. It works on a peripheral clock. And there's actually clocks in every bit of tissue in our body. There's clocks in our thyroid gland, there's clocks in our skeletal muscle tissue, there's clocks in our pancreas, there's clocks in our gut. And these are very, very much influenced by the environment. So if we start having dinner at 1 a.m. every night, our gut, yeah, our peripheral clock in our gut goes, oh, I'm going to start making digestive acids at one o'clock, right? However, your body clock, your master clock is saying, well, that is not the time that it is right now. Why is there a difference here? I can see the gut's kind of running his own party down here. That is called desynchrony. Uh, and that desynchrony is absolutely vital for disease and this is why we see a huge predominance of disease in shift workers in metabolic syndrome because we are desynchronizing the master clock with the food clock and the, and the pancreas and the digestive system and the thyroid for that matter so all of this is leading to a a miscommunication or uncomfort for the master clock that's fighting against these peripheral clocks the beauty of ph360 is it's about what it gives you instructions on is how to how to match the master clock with these peripheral clocks and if you get that right this is why timing is so powerful for bodies and when we're talking about timing of food hands down this is the most powerful thing that you can do for your client as a first step is get them eating at the right times regardless of what it is if you can get the right guidelines that we're going to talk about next into that as well you're going to make a huge difference to them there are two lots of clocks the central clock and the peripheral clock the central clock is the brain the peripheral clocks is all the tissues the peripheral clocks really interact with what you're doing and your behaviors. The central clock is very much light and dark. It's with the earth. So making them all match up is so, so important to really getting a great result for your clients. And I, I wanted to touch on that today because it's so vital for food uh, in all of the biotrains. Thank you. That was great. Let me run to my stove. Yeah, he's excellent. Yeah, take your stove and then
Can you see when Angela's back, Shana? I can only Hi. see you. I'm coming. No, I can't. See. Oh, I can see you now. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, I put a. I had to put a plate under it. I was taking the top off, the top part off of a double boiler, and I was going to sit it on the counter, but of course, it was leaking. So, of course, anyway. yeah. Um, I'll just go over a few more things. Obviously, Dr. Cam has touched on chronobiology, in particular reference to food, which is awesome because the, the same principles apply to everything. And we have a little saying in PH 360 where chrono is king. So chrono rules over everything else. The, the first priority for everything else, everyone is, is chronobiology. That was a great yeah. thought by Cam, Dr. Cam. Oh, we love Dr. Cam. And so just to clarify what chronobiology actually means, so chrono means time and biology is the study of life. So effectively, chronobiology refers to the clock inside our body. So the timing inside of our body. So everyone's heard us talk about, oh, everyone's spoken about their body clock before, their body clock being out, particularly when they travel. And so, oh, why can't I go next? Oh. Why can't I get my screen to move? Sorry, I'm just having tech difficulties here. That's all right. I'm a practice. I guess everybody's <laughs> coming to the later one. But this is late for me. This is night for me. So, Yeah, of course. And so our, our body clock, as Cam mentioned, will have our central clock, which is roughly 24 hours. It's in fact 24 and a half hours. Uh, and that responds to light and dark or day and night. So as he mentioned, it's particularly sensitive to artificial light, which can throw our sleep out, uh, which is why the blue, the blue light blockers are so valuable if you're working behind the computer screen quite a lot. Um, and then, as he mentioned, we've got the periphery clocks, which regulate local tissues or organs. And those ones are, fact, are affected by the environment or what we do. And these need to be in sync with each other, otherwise it will lead to uh, chronic disease, particularly if they're out for a long period of time. So the body will respond um, according to the time of day that it is. So I think I'm out of whack again. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're, talk what you're talking about and what's on the screen is the same. Yeah. I'm just out of order and oh. I'm not sure, you know, there's always, um, technical issues. There is that new moon about, isn't that Mercury that does that? <laughs> Mercury normally does, but I mean, an influx of energy will do all kinds of things. Yeah, it has. It's messed with my sleep. That's for sure. It's the stuff blue light, the new moon makes me not sleep. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> Yeah, some people say awake on the full moon. I say awake on the new moon. The full moon should make makes most people not sleep. Yeah, most people, but for me, it's it's the new moon. I'm fine. I sleep like a baby on the full moon. Um, <laughs> it's the new moon. I, I, I'm awake. I, just, I live uh, on I live on the equator, so you know it makes everything really and have for the last uh, eight years. Yeah, so, I think it's related to ley lines. I think everything. Yeah, everything, uh, you know, I mean, it's dark now, six o'clock is dark, six in the and morning is light. Yeah, and you yeah. have your blue light dark glasses on, I can see. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Great yeah. job, I'm really happy to see that. Uh, so yeah, how we time things will contrib uh, contribute to our genetic expression. So it can either activate or suppress our genes and that can either be a good thing or a bad thing, depending obviously if we've got the timing right or not. It can influence our hormonal shifts. So, for example, if a diplomat were to have a really, really intense uh, workout in the morning and increase their cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone, first of all, stress hormones being high a lot of the time is not advantageous. Second of all, if those stress hormones stay high for a diplomat, if they're too high in the morning, it will actually affect their blood glucose levels or their blood sugar levels later on in the day. So it will affect insulin as well, which is a blood sugar regulator. So not only hormone shifts, but also the physiological changes. So it will also influence the way that you feel just by the way that you time things. Uh, 
it'll respond differently, obviously, within the day. So how you time things within the day. The timing and optimal timing will also slightly change depending on the months or what season you're in. Even just thinking about it now, as you mentioned, you're near the equator, where you are in the world. So also the climate of where you are. Yeah, we don't get much change, 365, you know. Yeah. We have yeah. wet season for six months, which we just entered, which yeah, means afternoon and night rains, but mornings are sunny and the weather and the 80 degrees every day, no matter what. Yeah, so there won't be much fluctuation, but uh, so we see where I am, where it's Mediterranean, things will change a little bit. And I do notice the difference. It's harder to get up early in the morning because it's dark now when I get up. And so things will change a little bit, but if I wake up and expose my body even to artificial light, it helps me wake up even though it's dark because that it'll still feel like well, sunlight. I lived in Alaska for 13 years and I was very sickly up there. And uh, the reason I left Alaska, I loved it. I absolutely loved it, except I was very sickly. And um, the reason I left was because several doctors, including my main doctor, which was Chinese, uh, told me that my liver would not um, would, would not appreciate my staying in the cold or the no. lack of light. That is uh, very true. And so I had to. He said, "If you don't leave, you'll shorten you'll shorten your life." Yes. And, it, yes. and it won't be fun. It won't be fun. You know, you need to go to the Sun Belt. So I moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And yeah, definitely for activators. <laughs> activators do not like the cold and they do not like the wind. It's preferably dry climates, but warm over everything for sure. Um, but not only that, as you age, your body clock or your, your chronobiology will also shift a little bit. So the optimal times for you to wake and sleep. Uh, where your cortisol peaks also changes a little bit as you age and obviously your health type will respond uh, your health type will influence uh, your chronobiology as well and optimal timing for things i um, like the cold uh, I, I mean in my mind you know i was a skier i actually had a sled dog kennel for nine years and raced sled dogs and i loved the, i loved the winter i did helicopter skiing and all of that but my body didn't like it no, but you liked it because of the fun things you could do. It's just typical as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, did it no matter what time it was. You know, we just wore, wore headlamps, you know, because it was dark at two in the afternoon, you know. Wow. Wow, how bizarre. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> strange. Strange, yeah. And uh, now the equator, the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, the equator. <laughs> yeah, I, I envy the i envy you at this time of year when it starts to get cold around here but uh yeah side note just a little mention on coffee and coffee timing is related to your stress hormones as well and the stress hormones are not always bad particularly for activators it's what gets us moving in the morning so we actually respond quite well to cortisol in the morning uh, however the optimal timing for our coffee is around nine or ten where that cortisol starts to drop so we can ride the cortisol a little bit longer if we use coffee optimally at nine or 10 o'clock in the morning. If we do it early, the cortisol spikes too much. So then there's too much of that stress hormone, which can then lead to a crash mid afternoon, particularly due to the, the effects it has on insulin. So now, now I, are you talking coffee specifically? Or are you talking caffeine? Because caffeine. I, don't drink, I don't drink coffee, but my, profile tells me to drink all the chai tea which is black tea and all the green tea um, that I want and and um, they are heavy caffeine yeah I mean yeah. sorry you go Shana you oh, know yeah. way better than yeah. me I was gonna say because um green tea because of the tannins in the green tea and the specificity of the antioxidants that come with the different teas is what will actually assist the body in in utilizing that in a beneficial manner so green tea prior to that is absolutely fine uh chai tea because of chinese herbal medicine it actually has the, the cinnamon and it has the blood sugar regulators and the the calming effect of the different herb blend and, yeah. yeah, which is yeah. why that's recommended to be have had whenever you choose to. But obviously, because it is still tea, you don't want to have it too late. So then I normally switch over to a dandy chai, 
um, so that the, then it has no black tea. So, um, and some people, if you are affected by stimulants, then then um, normal chai tea will affect you. It just depends on the body. So if you are feeling like you are being quite well stimulated by it, maybe purchase yourself some dandy chai. Oh. And what time do you switch over? I'm not, um, I don't feel affected by either one of them. Yeah. You should be, don't worry too much about it then if it's not affecting your sleep. Whereas well, I make I sure. I don't have it in the evening, but maybe I, I might have it at four or five o'clock. Not regularly, fun. but once in a while. You yeah. know, but usually I have it between 11 and two. Perfect. But, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yep. If it's not affecting your sleep, because if it, because caffeine, I should actually change this to say caffeine. So that's a really good point. Most of us consume caffeine in coffee. Um, however, just like Shana said, it's not, it's, all caffeine's not the same as far as its um, effect on blood sugar. But if you're having it in the afternoon and it is affecting you, it can actually shift your circadian rhythm or delay your sleep by about three hours. So if you're still adhering to your sleep chronobiology quite easily, then I wouldn't worry too much about it. I know my dad falls asleep when he drinks coffee and he's an yeah. activator. <laughs> that's, a, that's adrenal, um, that's excessive adrenal activity. Uh, he, yeah, I'm yet to do his profile because he's nearly 70. So I want to be there because to be able to explain it to my dad over the phone. Yeah. Actually, my older sister's there, so I might do it next week. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes what you might find is an activator because their body runs on their adrenals all the time. If coffee's making them sleep, it's like the same as how they give speed to a ADHD. Well, I'm ADD and that's my treatment. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same thing. So I would say he's just living in an elevated state all the time and potentially stress management might need to come into a system. You know what my dad does all day? Okay. It's my dad wakes up, waits for the, drives to the beach, sits in the car park, waits for the sun to come up, goes surfing comes home, reads the paper, has something to eat, goes back surfing, <sighs> might go potter around in the workshop, do whatever he wants and maybe have a light afternoon surf if it's still glassy and then sit and have a glass of wine chill. Oh my God. I think I just <laughs> died on the inside with envy. <laughs> my go for a up stress management. Away. Yep. Lives away. It lives like at the, the bottom of his street is paradise. The beach is beautiful. Might go for a stand-up paddle. So I'm pretty sure it's not stress. Yeah, definitely um, not. Uh, yeah, he might go on a few surf camps um, for a year, go surfing for a month or so. But yeah, we'll know more when we um, measure him. And we'll see what his um, fire measurements are. So Angela, I'll just run you through how we work with the different um, chronobiology wheels. So I'll start with... Um, so there's the four wheels, the lifestyle, your food, your genius, and your exercise. Okay. So I'll start on the lifestyle, and I'm just going to use one little component of this to explain, and these are mine, as an example to explain how I would use them or how oh, I use because it. Because you're an activator, right? And I'm an activator. Yes. So. Yep. So, so for me, one thing that was major for me was I was suffering from a lot of insomnia. And still now, if I don't get this wake time correct, I don't sleep. So this week, because I was thrown out by the new moon, possibly was, well, was definitely an influencer, but I was then struggling to get up at the six o'clock time, which then meant I was struggling to go to sleep at night. So yesterday I had to get up at six and then last night I slept. And so if I am strict about that wake up time, or sometimes it's earlier than that, when it's summer, then I sleep. So it's really super important to get these, just to start the day right with that wake up time. And then I'll use this as an example. So with my lifestyle, it says here, the best time for me to socialize is between 12 and three. I definitely make sure I get up and breathe and move around this time. So I go for a walk. You could do any sort of breathing, stretching, yoga, anything just to get the, get the body moving. Definitely do my work intently around this time till about one o'clock. And then it says socialize. I don't normally socialize around that time, but if you go here to where my fitness is, it'll say between one and three is a really great workout time. Yeah, I was going to say that that coincides with the fitness. It coincides not only with the workout time, but it also with the interacting time. So what I do is I go to the gym 
and I train because that's my top priority and what I love doing. Obviously, I can't do that now, but normal life. I interact with people there and I see some of my friends and I socialize. So yeah. what will happen with all of these clocks is you'll find that they do correlate. However, I personally, being an activator, I will um, prioritize the fitness times. However, as I said before, if I get the sleep right, then everything else will flow and go well from there. And because I'm often getting a lot of work done in the morning, like I will just pump it out, then I'm like, great, I've got that done. And then because my workout times, if my workouts are so good because I've slept well, then I'm tired to fall asleep in the nighttime. So once you get one thing, it'll kind of flow on to all the others. Mm-hmm. So now that's like I was saying, uh, Sharna, the other day that I'm looking for something that's interactive. I mean, I can, I can watch the, the videos, you know, I've got a zillion of them on Pilates and yoga and Qigong and, and you know, abs and legs and, you know, anything I want. I've got videos, but I want something interactive. And so Ooh. that's, that's the deal. You know, it says, relate. And we'll, we'll, we'll move on and brainstorm this now for you and go through an actual, how we would coach you through these. But for example, Shana does online dancing classes. Um, dancing, that, or yes. dancing. I, I actually participate in someone else's dancing classes. So tonight is the night that I've posted in the Facebook oh, you group. Participate. I participate, and we do it via Zoom, just like this. And the teachers on there, and everyone. There's about twenty screens that are all up on the screen as well. And I watch my dance instructor, and I do yeah. it here in my room. And what time yeah. do you do that? That's um Thursday nights at six o'clock. But she has a whole host of different time frames and different classes. So maybe there's a time frame in there that may work in for you. I could even give you her website and maybe you could stream in from overseas and do a dance, start doing dance. Well, streaming in doesn't matter where you are, right? No. I mean, yeah. So is this a paid class? You buy it is it's 10 Australian dollars per class. Let's see, so you buy a packet of 10 or something? Uh, a packet of six, I think it is. Hmm. What time difference? What time is it there now? It's 6.30, oh, yeah. the night before, the night before. So what time is it with you, Chana? So for me right now, it is 9.30. 9.30 a.m. and it's 6.30 p.m. the night before. So it'll be on now, we're now on Thursday, so it's Wednesday. So then... That's hard. <laughs> I can't figure that out. Let's so, see, so it, um, it's uh, 15 hours earlier so it's what at 6 p.m 6 p.m p.m so 12 hours would be 6 a.m and 15 hours would be 3 a.m yes yeah, so now so also there are some other times well lindsay over in the philippines lindsay does a lot of um dance as well yes maybe we'll link you in with lindsay she's in the philippines that might assist i don't as know well, what so. time difference is but maybe that can be and normally we let you come up with these things, but you don't know about this. And so there's another one of our friends who she's, she's an a dancer. Activator. She's got a Pilates and dance studio in the Philippines and she's participating with a lot of things online. So she participates, I don't know if she runs them or just participates or both at the moment. I'm not sure what she's doing. She'd have but a whole host of options for you though. That could be an idea. That would be great. I mean, something that was fitness and music, you know, and dance. I Like I told you, I called my happy dance teacher, but she hasn't moved to do anything online. She's just sitting there, so. Yeah. Well, let's look at online. Maybe that can be in the plan. That can be online dance classes that you can find. And for activators, especially for you at this point in time, because social interaction is in our top three priorities still, and so it's still a really important thing for you to be doing. And, and I've, got, can... I've got another seven weeks of lockdown. Mm. All right, let's do, let's make that a little, a little task for the week is to see if we can find one that suits the timing. Can it be any yeah. type of dance? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's fitness dance. Yeah. Y you know. Let's see. Zumba, 
Your direct I'm, location is Colum Columbia? No, Kelowna. Columbia. Colum C O L O M B I A. Columbia. Everybody spells it with a U, but it's not. <laughs> so it's a no. <laughs> I read a book on Colombia about the a prison where they trafficked cocaine through it. Marching powder, it was called. Yeah, I've really heard that one. That was probably here in Medellin about 40 years ago. Uh, no, I used to have the book. I think I gave it away. It was a, I don't remember because I read it ages ago. Um, well, Pablo Escobar was headquartered here. You probably have heard his name. I've and heard he, he ran the cartels for forever. Oh, this guy, he was the first to do it. He ran it through the prison. Um, I might read it again, actually. Uh, so, and it would have been a, probably about the same time frame. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Um, well, Pablo Escobar was killed in 1993. And by 2000... Oh, all the cartels had shifted and they all went to Mexico and that's when we started hearing about all the Mexico drugs. And that's when Medellin started its Phoenix, you know, and became one of the top innovative cities in the world and high tech city and first world city and all that, you know, I mean, this is a fabulous place to live. But yeah. people still think of it as a drug capital of the world. And, uh, when I moved here, so many of my friends said, oh, my God, you're moving to Colombia? What about the drugs? You know, it's like, well, excuse me, it's 2013, and uh, Pablo Escobar was killed in 1993. <laughs> That's 20 years, you know. <laughs> well, marching part of the guy was apprehended in 96. San Pedro prison. Mm. In what town? Does it say a town? Oh, hang on. No, he was apprehended then. So then when he went into the prison. Oh. I went into Lindsay. In Bolivia and then went to San Pedro prison. San so Pedro. it would have been after, because if he was apprehended in 96, then that's when he would have gone to prison. And then he started doing drugs in, in the prison where he was incarcerated. Yeah, he was, he had a, he was running the drugs through the prison. Yeah, he was, he made his own cartel. Yeah. <laughs> well, some of the cartels hung around, you know, for about 10 years, but they kind of <laughs> went underground. They kind of went. Mm. They it's, a, it's a really good read, though, if, if you, but I don't remember much about it now because I read it about 10 years ago. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, digress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, digress. All right. And so I love that little um, idea. I think that'll be really good for you. And so with the other things, with the timing, is there anything that you think you could make adjustments around? Well, I mean, uh, Sharna was telling me the other day, you know, you need to get to bed earlier. You need to get up earlier. I get up at 7, um, sometimes 6.30, and I go to bed at 11, sometimes 11.30. And um, I'm kind of, um, you know, I told you I was a diplomat for five years, mm. and, um, and it's only been five months or yeah. five months since I became an activator. <laughs> and so, you know, I was thinking in Dr. Cam's thing, you know, I was thinking, Oh, you know, um, you know, my clock, you know, I was living the, the, dipl the diplomat clock for five years and some of it didn't feel good. Some mm. of it did. Some of it did because I'm probably a 40% diplomat, but some of it didn't. And um, I was stay, I was trying to stay in bed till nine or 10 in the morning. I was trying to stay in bed and I was going to bed at 12 or 1. In the, in the night, mm. and, you know, and so now I'm pulling, pulling in. And so you're not that far off, really. And I, I must admit, even if I push it out to 11, I'm still okay if I still get seven hours. Yeah. Um, but I try yeah. for 10.30. Um, well, I turned in my, my chart to, 
to the web to the WhatsApp site the other day, and I put um, wake at seven and bed at eleven. Turn off my computers and whatnot at ten, and you know, get in the sauna or or read a book or whatever I do, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, so. And that works for me. I don't feel I wake up in the morning energized and yeah. So it's not far off. And then if you look at the the genius side of your um, wheels and the optimal time for you to be working, and really for you it'll be working on your Toastmasters. Do you find that there's optimal times or when you're better in meetings? I know with Shana and I, we time our meetings. More for me. Shana's pretty good in the morning, but I die in the afternoon. She actually, she's better late morning on. So I'm flat as, right now. Yeah, but you can, you don't, diplomats are way more resilient than activators. Like I'm like, once I'm done, I'm like, I can't. Whereas Shana will still push through and be pretty good, even mm. if she's struggling. because She's just tougher. <laughs> so we time it. And because we're two hours different, we time you, it so we can have... Can you show your chart? Can you show your chart? Mine? Or Shana? Yeah. Yours. Activator. Yeah, so we time it so that it's both of our optimal times. So we have really productive meetings. Yeah. And we do that on purpose. Mm -hmm. Um the chart I put into you, I put um, work, which isn't really work, but you know, I mean, concentrative things uh, from 10 to one and, and then what did I put from the evening? Yours might be different to mine, given that you're in a different um, time zone, a different climate or different country and your age is different. And so I put five to eight. What, 10 to 1 in the morning and 5 to 8 in the evening. That's when you normally will work? Yes, because other people work and, I, and they want to meet me after 5. So on your chart, if you don't mind if I go, so... It, I don't you bring know, up Angela's? This is mine. So have you got Angela's? I can get into Angela's very easily. Awesome. So we'll look oh, at yours, great. Angela. And great. then we might see on mine, I'll, I won't share it again now, but in the afternoon it had creative time. So it could be that you just keep it in mind. And if there's a time where you're brainstorming on something or trying to come up with ideas, then you structure those meetings in for when you're more creative. If it's meetings where you've really got to be on the ball, like I always structure those for the morning because I'm more... Mm -hmm. I'm better functioning in the morning. So first of all, it's about being aware about, and okay with it. Like I'm okay that by about one o'clock, my productivity is dramatically reduced. I don't mind, I'm, I accept that. So then I adjust my, my meetings and things that I have to do so that I can honor that. So if it's, I'm more creative later on, I might have those casual brainstorming social meetings later on in the day rather than the morning. I have the, the difficult ones in the morning. Yeah. But it's what's possible for you. It's not always possible. Mm, yeah. Um, and everything I'm doing, everything I'm doing with Toastmasters is creative because I'm awesome. creative. And so is this the lifestyle one or the genius one? That's lifestyle. Do you want genius? Let's look at, well, what, what one do you want to look at? Um, um, and, uh, um Let's see, lifestyle is what? Well, I mean, what kinds of things? When I sleep and when I'm active? So well, let's look at genius because um, yeah. it's quite, it's quite a, a priority at the moment as far as... This one says do chores four to six. So that, that usually works. Awesome. If, if chores are, well, I don't know, I, you know. If chores are working on my little stacks of things, you know, if I've got to call nice. my investment company or I've got to... So if we look in your, your, your evening time, it's actually fine for you to think. So you might have some, what number? Yeah. One, two, five. One, two, five. Um, 
think, achieve and envision. So those sorts of things are still would, would come into play as far as work goes. That's very, <clears throat> that's this kind of activatory and connectory. I mean, the envisioning part is a very uh, connectory sort of a thing. Achieving is very um, crusader activator. Mm. Even diplomat though as well. True. Another thing is I, I can't, well, I shouldn't say can't, I don't sleep eight hours. Seven or seven and a half. I set my alarm every night for eight hours. Yeah. And I wake up every morning at 7 or 7.15 hours. That's pretty good, though. And I think I feel a fairly normal from memory. And I sleep older. well. I sleep well, you know, so. Seven, between 7 and 8 is, is fine. Seven I'm and more, seven and a half, yeah. Yeah. I'm similar to you. I'm seven between 7 and 8, and I'm good with that. Um, but as we can see here, if we look at your genius schedule, um, you're pretty right. sharp until about one and then it's kind of like, just be a little bit more flexible, get some activity in and then you can go back to work. So instinctually, you're already doing it pretty well. Think three to four, achieve four to six, envision six to eight. So. So that's from three to eight is, yeah. Yeah. That's I'm usually doing Zoom meetings <laughs> about something. Yeah. And, uh, and then let's see, rest. I, I, I would say, I wouldn't say I rest. I mean, sit down and read a book or something. I wouldn't say I do that. That's right. I, do, I don't do, I'm not active, but for me, I'm always active. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like activators you know, rest is different. A lot of times I cook yeah. and then I, I cook from that's good. That's yeah. good. That's so active, that's moving, that's methodical, that's using the brain, that's stimulating and challenging. That's perfect for an activator. Well, it's quite yeah. cathartic, like it's quite relaxing mm. doing that sort of stuff. It's yeah, for me, I love to cook, you know, so mm. I do that. And in the mornings, let's see, in the mornings is when I would clean my house. I mean, I, now with this lockdown thing, I, I can't just go through and clean my house. I'm not that, you know, at my age, I don't do that. And I can't get anybody in. So I clean two rooms. And the next day I clean two rooms. And the next day I clean the bathroom and the kitchen. And the next day I clean, yeah. you know, so almost every day. At least four out of the seven days, I'm I'm cleaning. Yeah, and, and I mean, because of the morning, I'm working from home. I mean, it does say prioritize there, but it, when you're prioritizing, you're kind of getting things set. So because you're working from home, it probably feels good, especially if you've got those kind of you've got some of those diplomat traits to get your place well organized before you sit down. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I just, I've organized everything and I love it. I know where everything is. Yeah. I got my sauna in here. I've got a room set up with my trampoline and my sauna and my yoga mat and my Pilates ball and my weights and, you know, and, and my computer's right there so I can watch my tapes, and, you know. Yeah. So you we're know. actually, you're actually doing really well with your chronobiology by the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, so the main thing that we can work on from this call is as far as the social goes, can you flick to the social um, wheel? That's really small print. Can you make it any bigger or no? Okay. Uh, is, is the wheel, oh, sorry, we don't have a social wheel. Silly me, Jen, back to the lifestyle and just see where the social part of it is and see if we can um, get the <laughs> optimal timing. So between 12 and two. So that also fits in quite well with the training time. So we so, can see if possible, do some dance classes in that time. And when the, when the, okay, so what I've been trying to do as far as eating, it says eat five times a day. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is the protocol for the um, immune booster, but I think it's pretty much the same without. Mm. Anyway, I'm trying to eat at 10, 12, 2, 4, and 6. Yeah. 
But yeah. sometimes, um, about half the time, my evening meal is more like seven because I don't get to cooking in t like tonight, you know, like. As long as it's before eight, you're good. Um, as long as your last meal. Yeah. And they're small eight. meal. I mean, I'm not eating a lot. Mm. By the way, Sharon, I lost, an, I've lost three pounds in four days and Ooh. I don't, I don't want to lose weight, you know? I mean, I don't feel bad, but today I did a burst, uh, an activity burst for 15 minutes at a cardio thing. Yeah. And uh, I did okay. I did okay. Yeah, good. I was, I was sweating and huffing and puffing a little bit, but but okay. I wasn't I wasn't like, Ugh, you know, because I'm well, not I mean, getting calories. the weight you've lost, the weight you've lost then, um, because you still got the energy, you still brain still functioning. So I ponder if the weight you've lost may be a little bit of fluid retention and or inflammation. Um, and then once you start eating again normally, it should fluctuate quite well. So even though you don't want to lose weight at the body, at the moment, if you're following the protocol, your body is doing whatever it's needing to rebalance and remineralize. And then coming back into your optimizing days, you should see your body fluctuate to where it should really be sitting. So even though you don't want to lose weight, potentially your body's going, I don't care right now. I'm getting rid of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I, you know, I've still got really loose stools. Yeah, and I, yeah. I'm so, not sure I would call it diarrhea, but you know, because I have actual bowel movements, yeah. and they're for, they're formed, but they're they're gassy and they're yeah. Like, like Fine, and that, that just says and, to me that there's other things in that your body's cleaning out, detoxing, detoxing. Yeah. yeah, but I'm at my you know I was a bit alarmed this morning. I'm at my high school weight. You wow, know, and it's like. Oh my gosh, you know, I mean. <laughs> Many people would, would beg for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm yeah I, I, don't, I mean, I'm watching and I don't feel weak. Yeah. I don't feel weak, so. Well, that, that's to me, like I said, I think that sounds to me like your body's just going, cool, we don't need to lose weight, but we're just going to shift these things that are still stuck there. And then when we come out the back of that and we go back into um, re-eating the right foods at the right times, you've reset and your body should then utilize things much more effectively. Yeah, tomorrow uh, I'm going to do day five tomorrow because uh, actually it's day six, but I'm going to do the last day of the reset tomorrow because day one I was getting organized and I ate some, that's when I ate the edamame and stuff. I ate some proteins and whatnot. So anyway, I'm going to do that one more day and uh, yeah, then I'll start the optimizing. Yeah. I'm going to start Monday. Awesome. Oh, are you going to do it again? You said yeah, you did Yeah, I just, because I've had a week where I really didn't feel good. So I thought, why not? Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm sleeping well, and I'm, you know, I mean, although, like I said, when I got those, uh, that video on the immune booster, uh, that the first one was skating, and oh my gosh, I can believe how weak my legs were. I was okay with my breathing, you know, I sweat, and I, I could keep up the activity but my legs were so i mean i haven't i haven't been able to go out and walk for mm. six weeks yeah you know and i jump on my trampoline and i do my little leg lifts and stuff but it's it's not the same i mean every day i mean at nine o'clock in the morning i mean i'm out there i'm going through the neighborhood and um, you know and then i'm dancing three times a week which i'm not doing now and yeah, we'll see if you can get the dancing in. Uh, there's some good exercises on the app as well. I'm sure Shana's shown you that. Yeah, that the app. Some stuff in there. Yeah. So you, you've gone through the PH360 app before. For dance? Uh, I that... think it's in the cardio section. There's some stuff in there that is dance oh, okay. style. Okay. Okay, well, maybe have a look because um, we'll wrap it up soon. Uh, maybe have a look through that section and see if you can find dance. And then over the next few days, or certainly by Monday, we'll see if we can get some dance classes um, working in with your time.
Yeah, it's looking like the Philippines are going to be awful. It's going to be 2 a.m. your time. Still doesn't work. Um, yeah, I know. What does it say? What time line, time zone they are? I'm minus five Greenwich, minus five. So anything mm -hmm. from minus ten to anything five hours on either side of that would be fine. I'm going to link you in with Lindsay in a um, WhatsApp chat. Um, and she is going to give you some different options. Okay. So what I, so I have, do you want to say anything more about this, Sage? I want to ask some no. food questions. Okay, so when I go to optimize, yep. um, I notice that, you know, I can have some fats and some proteins and, and it's only five days. And then at the end of the 10th day, I just go back to normal and yep. all that. Okay. Just During slowly the... reintegrate everything. Like don't, don't, don't turn around and, and have too much heavy stuff, uh, anything too uh, polar opposite to what you've been consuming. Just slowly reintegrate things that are easily to digest, easy to yeah. digest. And, you know, I think uh, one thing this has shown me is that I, I don't do very much beef and there's, I, sometimes I go for months at a time and don't have beef, but it seems like the last six months I've been trying to get more protein and I've been doing beef twice a week and, and my gut's been really bad. And now my gut is not good in terms of diarrhea, but my gut itself is not bad. I mean, I don't know how to say, it doesn't feel bad. I mean, I would wake up in the morning and just like, oh God, I just can't even move with my gut like this, you know, don't do that that's anymore. better. Yeah, that part's better. It's not burning. I, it's not clumping on me. It's not cramping. I was getting cramps right across the, the middle of my stomach. Um, mm. I, like, like across the large bowel, you yep. know, yep. Like, like like right here. Yeah, I, would get I mean, if that's all alleviated, that says to me that what we're doing is really quite effective. And and just to stick with it, I guess, you know, this is this is showing us that this is this progress and this change from diplomat across to activator is, is going to take time, but it is obviously on the right track. Do you think I should do the reset a few more days or no? No, 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 no. I think stick with the protocol okay. um, and now slowly reintroduce the other foods and just really look to ensure that you're getting a good variety across all of the top foods that you've got in your list. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Muy bien. Muy bien. That's my favorite Spanish word. Muy bien. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so some goals are just finishing out your program and bringing in some new foods and connecting you with some dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let us know how you go. Finish out, finishing out my program, you mean the protocol? The 10-day? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm going to take a picture of uh, what I'm eating tonight. It's one of their recipes. Mm -hmm. Yay! It's got one excellent... Uh, but the rest are greens with one yellow. Mm. Right. So that's all right then. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. We will we'll speak to you on Monday. Woohoo! Monday. What's Probably. Monday? The next call. Yeah. Probably. At the same time. Yep. So Sunday. Oh, Monday. Night so your Sunday. Sunday night. Oh, yeah. is Monday morning at nine. So, so Sunday is six. Okay. Your, your Sunday, yeah. Thanks, ladies. Okay, see ya. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Oh, Shauna. Shauna, yes. I wanted to say, um, or was it Sage? Uh, there was a lady that I didn't know. So it wasn't from our group. It was from this group, I guess. And she was um, saying... She's, she, she was saying she's 49, I think she said she was 49 years old. She's a 
long time PhD 360 person, and she was saying she can't lose weight and she's so disgusted with herself. Do you remember who? I, oh, Patricia. Lisa. Patricia. Patricia, not Lisa. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh no! Oh, there's long term. Oh, Lisa. Yes, sorry, Lisa is long term in PH sixty. Yes, yeah. Okay, so I had recommended a book to her, but what I wanted to tell her um, is that to keep from being so down on herself. You know, I try this and it doesn't work, and I can't do this and I can't do this, and you know, to know that toxins are rampant in our environment and it it's not all just what you put on the end of your fork you know mm -hmm. and so that's why i've recommended actually i've recommended two books on the um on the whatsapp today or yesterday yeah. and and they're they're reading books they're not recipe books or anything else they're both about food but but they're about um uh the, the, just the kind of thing that you guys were saying today, how, how different um, toxins affect your brain, how they affect your muscles, how they affect your attitude, how they affect your weight, you know, mm. and many, many times um, now, it's different than it was 20 years ago. We are flooded with toxins. Our makeup is toxic. Our, our, what we breathe is toxic and, you know, yeah. and so... I was. I just wanted to suggest that if, if one of you talks to her to give her that pep talk that she seemed so down on herself. I felt so bad because I know how it is. You can't. You can't. No matter what you do, it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, I think she saw that in the group. She is in the group chat, so I think she saw those books. Um, and I would love it if you ever feel like pepping her up and sending her a message in the group chat. I'm sure she would be tickled pink at hearing that directly okay. from you in the WhatsApp chat. Her name is Lisa, huh? Yeah, Lisa. not Lisa Westgate, Lisa, we've got Lisa W and we've got Lisa P. So she's Lisa P. Lisa P. Okay. Okay. Yay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, ladies. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Um, yep. Yeah.